Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and New Year's. It has been a little bit since I've posted a video, but we've been pretty busy with all the holiday activities and working, and I've been working on the gray car quite a bit, and it's time to get back to the red car here. The gray car's got some issues, so I'm probably just going to push that aside, but I wanted to make this video because I have quite a few people who have asked me how I have gotten... I have a VS 102 millimeter large frame turbo on a stock bottom N53, and that's on my red 1997 Cobra. And a lot of people ask how I got that to actually spool up in a reasonable amount of time. And the way I did was I used a whole bunch of advanced tables with the rolling two step or three step or whatever you call it, just RPM offsets, pull in timing, things like that. Um, there's a lot of other fantastic videos online about how to do this. I figured out basically how to set the tables up through watching Devin Vanderhoof's videos and Turbo John's videos, which I can put links in the description below about how to do that. But the one that really helped me out big time is I asked, um, I'm sure if you guys are on Facebook or Turbo World a lot, Murphy Jenkins has a pretty badass F S10. It's got twin 76s on a little 5.3. Thing rips pretty hard. But um, I was just talking to him and he told me just to get crazy aggressive and see what it'll do. And so that's basically what I did. I did some wild things and that's kind of why it sounds so wild, but it seems to work pretty good. So I'll do my best here to show how it did. But um, as far as the combination goes, stock bottom end 5.3. For a majority of the season, it had a PTC 1640 converter in it. And that was a quite a tight one, but it still worked pretty good. And then in some of the last videos I'll show on this clip, I'd had a Hughes, and that was a 2030, which was far too loose. But I'll show how I did it and what I used for my timing tables and how all that stuff worked. And yeah, I'm very happy with it. I mean, the thing pops off pretty quick for being what it is. I think the last time with the Hughes converter, I made 15 and a half pounds of boost in four seconds or something. So it seemed to do pretty solid, and I will do my best showing how it worked. So here, now I will show you some of my tables here that I used. So this pass, I believe I went a 517 at 139 or something. This is at Rock Falls later in the year. I was still running the PTC 1640 converter in it. Same setup, SBE 5.3. Now if you're looking for these tables and you don't have them, you need to go to Toolbox, Add Individual Configuration, and then select Advanced right up here at the top. But if you already have that, advanced, 1D tables, and then everything that has a green dot up here is your active tables. So table seven is my rev limiter offset table. So you can see I call this rolling two-step. The table type is a rev limiter number one offset, which is my two-step. X-axis is boost, and then it's switched enabled to activate when the trans brake is enabled. That is key. So then you can see here, what this is, is adding RPM to whatever my commanded two-step is, which I believe is 4,200 in this run. But, and it's adding 1,000 RPMs until the motor makes, looks like, 9.6 pounds of boost. It starts pulling RPM out of it to bring it back to my commanded launch. That's what gives it that gnarly pullback sound that you hear every time I get up on the chip. And then my other table is my boost builder, and that is a timing offset. And then the x-axis is boost PSIG, and I enable that when rev limiter one is enabled, which is enabled when the trans breaks, so you could really do either of them. And then you can see here, back at zero PSI of boost, I am adding eight degrees of ignition timing to the engine. And I do that just to get everything rolling, get the turbine wheel to have some speed in it, make it light up quick, you know, rev up real fast, like an NA car almost. And then once it reaches about 4.3 pounds of boost, I'm adding zero degrees of timing. And then you can see it dramatically pulls it all the way down to negative 17 by the time it makes six and a half pounds of boost. And then it holds at negative 17 degrees until about 10. And then you try to taper it back up to zero and so it looks like here I was trying to leave on about 13.9 PSI, and I don't believe it did. Sometimes it don't quite make it all the way there, depending on you know, how much I did or how fast I pulled it out. These tables, I've, I have a lot, a lot, a lot of time into these tables to try and get them to work good. And they seem to work all right, but we'll give you a little look at what the data log looked like here. So here is that log. Zoom in, get over to boost. 
And then, oop, let me roll it back just a little more. So you can see this green line here is right when I floored it. And so then from the time I floored it, I'll set a zero there, right? When you get up to about 100. Go here, set zero. Yes. Go back, zoom into it. Right when I made hit the chip, it was 3.8 seconds. So that's not too bad for quite a radical combination. And you can see here, this blue line is ignition timing. And it started right when I floored it, we were running about 29 degrees. It popped up to 38 and then fell down to 2.7 was its max low. And then right when I let off the button, it looks like we left on about 11.5 PSI. And the ignition timing was five and a half. So that table needs a little work to get it ramped in just a hair quicker. So it comes down to where it's supposed to be for the timing. So you don't get this little blip right here in the beginning. You can see that's the ignition timing popping back up to where it's supposed to be and then pulling it all back out for the uh, all the boost in this thing. It did have a little RPM dip in here. This is kind of the converter acting weird, but as you can see, boost held nice and steady, 32 and a half pounds-ish, 32.3 was the max. And it did all this from flooring it to letting off the button in four and a half seconds. So that's not too bad for the setup. And I really like the way it works and I will drop a clip in of what that sounded like in this video. So now here is the tune-up from the Hughes converter, which I said earlier was significantly too loose, but with a looser converter, you can get a little way and get a little more aggressive with boost building, so that's what I did. So we'll go to table number seven, which was my rolling two-step. You can see rev limiter offset one, x-axis boost, enabled with the trans brake. It was still about the same, adding a thousand RPMs until 10.7 pounds of boost, and then looks like I just held it out just a little bit longer until about didn't get down until about 14 PSI, it made its desired RPM number. Then if we come up to my table eight, which is my boost builder, timing offset, x-axis boost PSI G, switch enabled is still rev limiter one or trans brake. So you come down here, front half is still the same, still adding eight degrees till about 4.3, but then you can see when it made six pounds, I pulled 20.4 and I kind of tapered it back in and then put it right back up. So it looks like ideally I left on 16, but I think it left somewhere in this mid 14s range. So that table would have to be modified just a little bit to get it to be exactly perfect. I only had about three runs on this transmission before it was, I absolutely could not put any power to it. All it would do is slip. And that was mostly loose torque converter stuff. So I'll show you what the data log looked like for that. So you can see green line right here is where I floored it and we that's zero that is my zero in the run and right when i started banging the chip was about 2.9 seconds and we had 12.7 psi of boost right there and it looks like we are running around one degree of ignition timing so then you come back here this is right when i let off the button it had 14 psi of boost and we we're running about three degrees of ignition timing. So still not a big fan of how that is. It kind of makes the motor jump a little bit because then it pops up to about 19 right off the chip, but then falls right back into that, that sweet spot where she runs out the back. So otherwise the boost look pretty good. And I think that timing is a little bit of what's going on in here with this little boost dip here, but otherwise it looked pretty, pretty solid. And you can see there how loose that guy was. Had a 300 RPM shift. And I think it went like a 580 at a very slow mile an hour. We can look over here. Just talking about how loose that guy was. 127 on the drive shaft. So that's about 12 miles an hour down of where it's supposed to be. So that one did not work for me. So we're getting all this stuff addressed right now with the new torque converter, but that is how I spooled it up. And you can see with the loose one, it, it really made some nice really made boost super easy and super quick but it won't be like that because that one was just too much 
But yeah, that's how I did it, guys. I hope this video helps you in some way. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on Facebook, Instagram, anything you want. Um, like I said earlier, Devin and Turbo John have great videos on how to set all this stuff up too, and I'll tag their stuff in the description below. But other than that, that's all I got. I will show a video from this pass right after this, and that'll be the end. Thanks for watching, guys.